For more on this, we turn to Matthew Rojanski, director of the Kennan Institute at the Wilson Center, specializing in U.S.-Russian relations. Uh, Matthew, what happens now? Because the idea is that, uh, is that Biden's going to go there, have a conversation with Putin about the, the, what this relationship looks like going forward. Uh, but there's this in the background. Yeah, thanks, Ali. Uh, there's this. Uh, there's the solar winds hack, there's election interference, and quite frankly, there's ongoing cyber rivalry, cyber espionage. You know, some of it's not going to end. Uh, but I think the two leaders are pretty committed uh, to launching a serious, what's called strategic stability dialogue, and that's going to address everything that ranges from, you know, the thousands of nuclear weapons that both sides still have to potentially some rules of the road uh, for what's acceptable and what's not acceptable in cyberspace. Let's talk about uh, what is acceptable and how allies are formed in this space. Are U.S. allies uh, in, 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 the, in cyberspace the same as its allies are in the real world? Well, look, by and large, the same rules apply to alliances, which means you define your allies carefully, you pick them carefully, and you stand by them. You want to have common values as well as common interests. You know, cyberspace is not a magic different domain when it comes to those kinds of fundamental political relationships. Similarly, with deterrence and diplomacy, you know, you want to conduct deterrence. That means you say, if you cross this red line, there will be consequences, just the same, same way you would do in the military realm, in the nuclear realm. And you want to conduct diplomacy on cyber issues as well. Um, there are a couple of key differences. One is that cyber espionage is going to continue just as espionage continues in the bricks and mortar world. In other words, espionage is something that's designed to gain an edge over a rival. And that's something that all countries that have the capability are going to keep doing. You can't negotiate to end spying. Uh, the second big difference is the role of private actors. Uh, remember that you have a lot of private companies, both on the offensive side and the defensive side, and you have various kinds of gray groups occupying spaces that sometimes are close to governments, but sometimes are not that close to governments. And they're always going to be able to interfere in the space as well. But that's the difference between the brick and mortar world, right? That's the, the, the uh, it's, it's easier to tell who's, who's who on the ground than it is in cyberspace. So these gray entities, these maybe quasi-governmental organizations, how do they fit into treaties and deals? When Biden's there talking to Putin, how does he address this stuff if the Russians say it wasn't us? Yeah, President Biden actually made that point when it came to the colonial pipeline ransomware attack which, as best as we understood, was, in fact, a private actor. It was a malign criminal private actor that sells its services to bad folks. Uh, however, it likely was based, or at least partially based, on Russian territory. And so President Biden's reaction to that was to say, look, we don't hold the Russian government directly responsible for this, but the Russian government, like all government governments, has an obligation to be responsible for the, for the bad actions of people operating out of its infrastructure and under its jurisdiction. So I think that should exactly be a part of this uh, strategic stability dialogue that uh, we expect to begin uh, after the summit in June. Strategic stability. Uh, Biden says he wants a stable, predictable relationship with Russia. He's also imposed new sanctions. Are these things contradictory? No, the, the message from the administration is very much we need to walk and chew gum at the same time. And I think this is the important departure from the past. Uh, abandoning some of the unrealistic high expectations that were attached to the reset in the Obama administration, that Russia would transform, it would turn into a democracy, you know, that Russia's behavior in its immediate neighborhood, which it uses vital to its survival, would change 180 degrees. You know, that's unlikely to happen. And yet these other big picture uh, areas of strategic rivalry and strategic competition need to be stabilized. The kinds of bad behavior we've seen from Russia directed at the United States and against NATO. We need to put some guardrails on that. Uh, but at the same time, I think also realistic expectations about what the two leaders can achieve. You know, you've, I think President Biden knew what he was doing when he said he sees Putin as a killer. He is suggesting this isn't going to be a Trump-Putin style uh, friendship. Matthew, thank you for your analysis tonight. Matthew Rojanski. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.